Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, now I know a lot of you, like majority of you have your exams over. So what that means is you might have given either these entrance exams like JE, BITSAT, whatever. And now you're in a phase wherein you're done with exams. You have a lot of time before you even get into college. So this gap, this time is incredible. You'll never get this back in your life. And uh, I think this is the most amount of free time you'll ever, ever get in a long time. So uh, today I want to tell you a bit about how you can utilize this time really well. Uh, few things that you can do, few things to chill and few things to learn. Uh, and hopefully by the end of this video you will take back something. Three months is something that I like to call the exploratory phase. The exploratory phase is where you go all out, you explore every single field that you can, you watch every single TV show that you want to, you you know go out and uh, uh, you know watch every single YouTube video that you want to and start exploring different stuff uh, uh, and it's really important because uh, right now like you're just getting into college you haven't figured out your life you have a lot of time to figure out your life so when when you don't have a lot of options you just don't know what to choose and to get options you need to explore so this is a really critical time to start exploring and today I'll be telling you a couple of things that you can do these are few skills, these are few professions that are, you know, growing and if you just Google these things up and start reading blogs or medium articles or watch YouTube videos, then you'll get a brief idea about how each one of these field functions and if it's something that you'd like to enter because right now a lot of you are unguided, a lot of you don't have people who tell you, alright, do this, do that and I think the exploratory phase is a great way of knowing about it. Like I spent my entire first year of college in exploring different things before I learned that alright this is something that attracts me and I should double down and learn that particular skill. So today I made a list of a couple of skills, a couple of high in demand skills. These are all technical skills. I'll also be talking about some non-technical skills. And if you're someone who's getting into commerce or medical, then even, even, even if you're a commerce or medical student, I would highly encourage you to learn some technical skills as well. So let's start with the technical skills first and then I'll move on to the non-technical skills. Remember, I told you guys to explore. And what I mean by explore is I'm reiterating. By exploring, I mean going to Google, typing it out, reading the first, like in, click on all the links that show up on the first page of Google, click on all the links that show up on the second page of Google and you'll have a brief understanding about what that field is and uh, if you really want to get into it. This is a tactic that one of my friends Mehul says, if you want to learn anything in the world, then just type in the name of the topic on Google and click on every single link that's there on the first page of Google, open a new tab and if you read every single blog, every single article about it, then you just become a master in that particular topic. So this is something, if you want to learn something new, just try this out. Now before I get into each one of these, I'll just give you a quick summary. I'm going to read all of them out. So let's get started. Competitive coding, intro to C++, financial analysis, intro to stock markets, front-end with React.js, back-end with Node.js, intro to Python, video editing, graphic designing, startups and product management, machine learning with Python, deep learning with Python, UI, UX design with Figma, public speaking, co cloud computing with AWS, intro to blockchain, intro to cybersecurity, intro to app development with Flutter, digital marketing, data analysis using Microsoft Power BI, intro to game development with Unreal Engine, 3D and animation with Blender, building websites with WordPress, intro to Arduino, intro to Raspberry Pi, quantitative finance, content creation. Now, this is a lot of things to do, right? And I'm not asking you to go and purchase a Udemy course and start watching it. I'm just asking you to explore and type all of these things out on the internet and see what they are. Now, uh, let me give you a brief about each one of them. I'm going to start off with content creation, right? Uh, I'm creating content on YouTube. You can create content on Instagram about whatever you like. And uh, recently, I was reading this uh, article by Jack Conti. Jack Conti is the founder of Patreon. Right? And uh, he said the beginning of Renaissance 2 has began. Like now is the revolution where a lot of new creators are going to come out, a lot of brand new artists are going to come out and produce a lot of quality stuff, a lot of quality art, a lot of quality videos, a lot of quality pictures and that's going to bring in a new form, a new wave of content online and this is something amazing uh, and if you want to be part of the wave if you want to build your own personal brand or if you want to you know just make content and help other people out then now is the right time to make the video if you're shying away from holding this camera or sitting or maybe using your phone and filming yourself then do not do that just 
film, this document, just tell people whatever you know about. I'm not a, I'm not an expert, but still I just talk about whatever I know about and it sort of helps people. So no matter who you are, even if you're just a JE student, make a video call day in the life of a JE student and you know, you might help someone or motivate someone. So content creation is the next wave. Create content on anything, it's totally fine, but just keep pushing out good content. All right, now let me give you a quick brief overview about what each one of them is. Competitive coding, it, it essentially teaches you how to solve problems, right? Because when you, uh, you know, you know, after college, when you go to companies, a lot of these companies encounter specific problems in their processes. And uh, competitive coding, in a way, helps you solve these problems. So it involves things like data structures and algorithms. So, uh, a lot of internships and placement people this it, it, these are like questions that are included in the interview rounds so if you are someone you know planning to do that then you can get into it already but i would say competitive coding is great but at the same time it would not teach you how to make a website it would not teach you how to make an app it's just pure problem solving so it's great to get started with coding but at the same time make sure to you know have some complementary skills as well I think C++ and Java are the most popular languages for competitive coding. So, but you can use any language to be honest, so it doesn't really matter. Then uh, financial analysis, it teaches you how to analyze the stock market, you know, things like fundamental analysis, what are, what's futures and options, stock market analysis, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, even that's pretty useful. There's a good course by Yale on Coursera uh, called Intro to Financial Markets. It really teaches you about how the economy, about how the financial world functions. And it's really important for you to know how the markets function. And so if you want to know about how companies like Morgan Stanley or JP Morgan, all of these you know huge financial companies work some some company like fidelity uh, if you don't know how these works then uh, you got to have a brief understanding of the financial markets and a lot of you know financial terms so take that up front end with react js react js is one of the most popular javascript libraries used to make websites it's uh, great so start off with html css and javascript once you're slightly comfortable with it move on to front end with react js and then back end with node js then comes python python is like used a lot in the world of machine learning and deep learning so if that's some field you're looking at then you know having a basic knowledge of python helps and later on you can move on to deep learning uh, there's a classic course by andrew ng uh, it's on coursera and you know over there he teaches you how to do machine learning using matlab i think and if you want to get into deep learning which is like uh, which involves like neural networks and stuff then you can start using libraries like tensorflow or you can start using pytorch which is by facebook i think pytorch is getting really popular recently so you can start off with pytorch then comes video editing video editing is insane uh, there's a huge demand for that a lot of people do want a lot of businesses a lot of creators want to get their videos edited like if you go to any of these freelancing sites you'll see a lot of gigs for video editing so i would say start off with something really simple like say microsoft movie maker or imovie and once you're a bit comfortable with the interface you can move on to something like Premiere Pro or Final, uh, Final Cut Pro and uh, these are like really high-tech softwares and if you really master them then uh, th there are chances that in the future you might work for a Netflix show or maybe some Amazon Prime show or maybe you even go out there and work on a Hollywood or Bollywood movie. By the way, video marketing is the future. Like when, when you make videos, when companies make videos, that's the one that gets the highest engagement. So uh, I can say for sure that video editing is something that's going to be in high, high demand uh, moving on because every form of marketing is moving towards video. It's, it's centered around video. Graphic designing, start using Photoshop. It's an amazing tool. Uh, but before you use Photoshop, try out Canva. Canva.com is the easiest way of building, you know, uh, small graphics. And once you're comfortable with Canva, once you can make brochures, book covers, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, you can do everything on Canva. Once you're comfortable with that, you can move on to Photoshop for more intricate, for more complex things. And, you know, once you learn how to use different layers and how to put different vectors and make some crazy graphics, you will be in high demand because graphic designing is also that a lot of startups and companies are hiring for and it's a great skill to have it like design is amazing if you know UI UX and graphic designing then you are pretty much set because these are really good skills that every company wants that uh, and you can even start your own agency with these skills like in college a lot of clubs and departments want to design posters and want to design banners and stuff and people who know graphic designing they're in high demand People respect you if you know graphic designing. So learn that if you're getting into college and if you're planning to get into clubs and departments. Startups and product management. If you have been wanting to start up for a long time, 
do it right now or uh, learn on the way like if you start up right now i'm pretty sure you're gonna fail like 99 percent of the people would fail at such an early age but it's totally fine i'm not discouraging you you'll learn a lot right so uh, do try starting up you'll learn a lot when i started like i st i was planning to start a digital marketing agency and because i was planning to start a digital marketing agency i learned facebook ads google ads linkedin ads blogging and uh, seo all, all of these things because i was planning to start up though i failed i i learned these skills at the end of the day right so plan to start up do like like starting up doesn't even take money do not worry about things like gst you do not require to register your company until you start earning considerably so don't care about it just start uh, whatever startup you're wishing to start ui ux design with figma now ui ux is really important every single product that is made today needs to have good ui needs to have user friendly ui so learn how to build good ui and ux designs for websites apps and anything any any sort of application software uh, now you can use a tool called Figma. Figma is one of the most popular tools for UI UX design. So go out there, try out Figma and make some really cool apps and websites design. Public speaking. Now public speaking is really important. It helps you get some leadership skills. It helps you persuade people. It helps you negotiate. It helps you, you know, get confident in front of, in front of a lot of people. I know a lot of people who are like who do public speaking full time. They get paid to do public speeches. And a great way of doing public speeches is on our Discord community. So join our Discord community. People meet every day at 5 p.m. to practice English and to practice public speaking on various topics. So every day at 5 p.m. on Clinify's Discord. I'll see you there. Even I would be there in a few days. You can film yourself using a camera or using your phone or stand in front of your mirror and talk on impromptu topics. By impromptu, I mean random topics. Things that, you know, just come in your mind. Ran really random topics that you make on spot. So start talking up, uh, or start talking impromptu and practice in front of a mirror. That really helps. Cloud computing with AWS. Learn how to use tools like AWS and Microsoft Azure. You know, people who know how to use these cloud platforms are in really high demand. But I would say first learn programming languages. And once you are a master of some programming language, say JavaScript, then you can move on to cloud computing. Try out how Azure is. Take a free trial. See what other microservices offered there. They, uh, go to AWS, see what other different services offered by them and trust me, you will be mind boggled by the amount of things you can do. You can build chatbots, you can you know run machine learning algorithms over there, you can do data analysis, tons of things on these cloud platforms which are definitely the future. You know, things like Google's NLP algorithms are out there on Google's cloud platform so if you are someone who's, who wants to like really get into deep learning, try out uh, Google's cloud platform. Uh, recently, uh, you know, blockchain is an amazing technology that's going to be used across a lot of industries to make things more transparent and to, think, and to make things more secure. So just have a brief understanding about how blockchain works. I'm really not sure about its scope in India, but uh, on an enterprise level, I'm pretty sure a lot of companies are going to deploy it. So have a brief understanding of blockchain. If it's something that really interests you, then go for it. I personally haven't explored blockchain too much. Intro to cybersecurity. So many people are on the internet and the chances of you know you catching some ransomware or you getting a virus is insane so learn about how cybersecurity works learn about ethical hacking learn about how networks work and that will help you grab an opportunity in a lot of cybersecurity startups that are coming up a lot of cybersecurity companies that are coming up right you can go work for an antivirus company in the future so learn how ethical hacking works learn how networks work learn how the entire cybersecurity space works what are the different forms through which you know your computer is vulnerable and you know DOS, attack, DOS attacks, things like that. So uh, go out there, learn cybersecurity. Even that's going to have crazy, uh, you know, future because everyone's on the internet and everyone's doing stuff on their laptop. So security is going to get compromised. Then you can try out Flutter, which is used to make, uh, you know, Android cross-platform apps. So uh, if you use Flutter, then you can make Android and iOS apps at the same time without writing separate code bases and it's becoming really really popular so try out flutter if you're into app development love bubber has made a great video about you know the roadmap to flutter so do watch that it's great marketing is the future right you know of uh, facebook ads google ads and things like that but uh, to be honest like i was watching abhinav arora's video where he clearly portrayed that digital marketing is not just about running ads it's about telling stories it's about telling compelling stories that make your customers or potential customers buy your product so you need to learn how to brand yourself how to tell good stories and how to run good ads 
and that's going to be the future of digital marketing. And digital marketing also involves things like you know influencer marketing, where you, where you pay influencers to say good stuff about the product. It also involves things like content marketing and video marketing and you know Instagram marketing. A lot of things is involved. So explore the field of digital marketing. It will really give you an idea about how to market a product. If you have something to sell, then how you can bring it out to the masses and you know spread it out there, right? So learn about how organic reach happens. Learn about how inorganic reach happens on Google, and it's a amazing field. I took up a digital marketing course back in my twelfth grade, and it was quite enriching. Now, when I look at the internet, I know how things are working, how people are using different marketing strategies. And Microsoft Power BI is something that a lot of lot of enterprises are using. Even my dad's company uses Microsoft Power BI to do data analysis. And people who know how to use Microsoft Power BI properly, how to do like a visual representation of data, are in high demand. So go out there, learn, download Microsoft Power BI. It's totally free, and you can represent a lot of data. It's much better than you know using Excel to represent data. Uh, this gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of crazy graphs and crazy things that crazy visualizations that would give you a brief insight when you have tons of data. So a lot of companies are using it. Try it out. Checking the game dev stats and it's insane. A lot of game dev startups are getting funded. A lot of people are hiring game developers. And if you know Unreal Engine, then it's great for you, right? So uh, go out there. Go, you search on YouTube for Unreal Engine tutorials and download Unreal Engine and start your game development journey. I'm not really sure about game development. I mean, I haven't tried it a lot because I have a Mac. <laughs> but uh, you can uh, obviously, if if that's something that really interests you, if you really want to make games, uh, which are obviously gonna uh, take over over the next few decades, then uh, go check out game development. I'm not really sure about this. I'll get someone else to talk about it. All right, change my location. Building websites with WordPress. Now WordPress is the easiest way of shipping out a website as I told you but that doesn't mean you shouldn't learn how to code. Uh, if you're like a newbie who's, who's just getting into web development then try out WordPress. It will give you a brief understanding about how websites work and uh, if you want to make a website within a day or something then try out WordPress. Just import a template on WordPress. You can just go to YouTube and type in how to make a WordPress site and get tons of videos. And I made my first site on WordPress and it was amazing. So uh, try out WordPress, it's a good skill to have, right? When you, have, when you, when you want to make quick websites. Intro to Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Arduino and Raspberry Pi are these microcontrollers used to do amazing stuff. Like you can make tons of projects. You can maybe play Minecraft on it or you can make a drone using it. There are so many things you can do with uh, Raspberry Pi and Arduino. So uh, if you're at home, then just buy one of these and uh, just Google up. Raspberry Pi has its own website with tons of projects right from how to make a 3D printer using Raspberry Pi to how to make flying drones with Raspberry Pi. You can do a lot of these stuff. So just Google it up, go to these websites, get uh, those microcontrollers and start building. It, it's just amazing. It'll teach you a lot about Python. It'll also teach you a lot about you know these microcontrollers and how you can use the great combination of code and you know electrical circuits to build something amazing. Quantitative finance, look it up. And finally, uh, 3D animation using Blender. Blender is used for 3D and animation, and it's amazing. Uh, you can create a lot of realistic 3D objects. Like on Photoshop, it's 2D, right? But on Blender, you can create 3D objects using uh, you know their tools, and it's crazy. A lot of demand, right from marketing to you know a lot of TV shows and in the entertainment industry use it. So might as well give it a shot, right? So uh, try out Blender. I'm pretty sure it's going to become really popular, as popular as you know, Photoshop or something uh, in the near, near future. So it's always good to adopt a skill really quickly so that when there's high peak, you can capitalize on it and not miss out or be like, hey, it's a saturated place. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have a really productive, uh, you know, break and hope you get good colleges. Even if it's a bad college, it's totally fine. Uh, at this point, I, I don't think college would really matter. And at the same time, if you get into a good college, then congratulations. Uh, comment down your favorite skill, what you're going to learn this break and uh, that'll, that'll help other people out. If I didn't miss out on anything, then do let me know or uh, comment that skill out as well in the comment section. Take care. Bye. I'll see you in the next one.